Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to talk about what to do when you get a brand new oscilloscope. And as you can see here, I have the Rigol 1054Z. Definitely not a new scope, but brand new to me. I just bought it. Uh, Amazon had a really good deal on it and uh, couldn't pass it up. So, what are the first thing you should do when you get a new oscilloscope? Well, the first thing you should do is RTFM. But seeing as how we're all dudes, we don't read manuals. So plug it in. Make sure you know you have a good clean power source to plug it into. Plug in your power supply and turn it on. We'll see this takes about, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds to power up probably. Most of your modern scopes are going to take a few seconds because they go through a series of self-checks and things like that. But it really shouldn't take all that long. And then once we're up and running, yeah, part of my computer rebooting, I just got a uh, blue screen of death a couple minutes ago. Okay, once we're up and running, you're going to want to go to your utility menu, system, let's see if I can find it. System info, no, that's not it. Where is she at? There we go. You're going to want to do the self cow. Almost every scope has a self cow. Now, I just did it on this one, so I'm not going to do it again because it took almost uh, 25 minutes. So, once you've got your self cow done, the next thing that you want to do is get your probe set up. Uh, since this is a four channel scope, we've got two packs each of these probes. And these are unfortunately the PBP 2150s. Rigel used to give you the RP um, 2200s, which are 200 megahertz. These are only 150 megahertz. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of sad. But I guess they had to cut back somewhere to uh, save a little money, right? Right. Okay, here are our probe specifications. Our bandwidth, now you notice here, bandwidth at 1x is only to 35 megahertz. I'm not going to go into why. Kangaroo Dave did a fantastic video on why this is. You have to be at 10x to get to 150 megahertz bandwidth out of them. So we'll get out our probes, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do, and I recommend you do this too, is to put on your colored rings. I know this may not seem important now, but it will later. You're definitely going to want to have these, because when you're grabbing your probes later on, you're going to want to know which ones are which. So in this case, it doesn't really matter where we start, but uh, channel one on the scope is yellow. So I will grab a yellow ring and clip her on there. Like so. And then we need to do the same to the scope end, I mean, this, like I said, this doesn't seem important, but it'll really help you later on when you got four probes going on here. So, okay, we got this going now, and we are ready to hook it up to the scope. I'm just going to hook up channel 1 here. You won't want to do this for all your channels, but I'm only going to show you on whoops, one channel at a time. So we're going to hook it up, and then over here we have our probe compensation, which outputs a square wave, usually a kilohertz or 1500. 
connect your ground and then connect like so and if you're new just press your auto button that's all you got to do let the scope do the work okay so here is our waveform and if you look at that you can see we have some overshoot so we are a little bit overcompensated now on the probe right here is a little screw right there where you see my thumb so what you want to do is use the plastic adjusting tool that came with your oscilloscope kit and just rotate it like that until you have a nice square wave and that's how you compensate your probes so you're going to want to do that for all your probes all right, so as you can see I've got uh, my channel 1 and channel 2 channel 1 is the yellow channel 2 is the cyan I've got them both attached and they are both compensated so that's looking really good that's our second step remember first step self calibrate your uh, scope step number two do the probe compensation now you know or you have a reasonable belief that the readings that you get from the scope will be true and actual readings so next thing you want to do is set up the scope for how you like it. That includes things like brightness, graticules, um, frequency, all that kind of stuff. So let's go into that next. First thing that I like to have on every scope that I use is a hardware frequency counter. Now you see down here I have the little frequency counter that's the software frequency counter and if I change the horizontal time scale so that we don't have a couple of complete waveforms you can see that just goes away so what you want to do is hit measure counter in this case I'll just put it on channel 1 and now we have our hardware frequency counter and that will be there and that will be good again personal preference so my next preference is uh, setting up the brightness of the screen and the graticules so we're just going to come over here and hit the display button we have the grid and you can set that whether you want uh, small graticules large or basically none I'm going to go with small and then brightness I like it pretty bright so I'm going to set it for a hundred percent and that's basically just for the video here now it has a persistence display and uh, we're not going to get into that now like I said we're just talking about the settings so so far we have everything set up preference wise we have our calibration we're all good so now it's time to start playing with your scope you can hook it up to a function generator a frequency generator start probing some circuits but what if you don't have a function generator or you know an arbitrary waveform generator fear not because if you just have an Arduino or even a 555 timer if you can get yourself a square wave I'll show you a couple tricks. Let me bring in my little Arduino thingy here. And as you can see, there's not much going on here. We've got ground hooked up and we've got uh, digital pin 5 coming over here to this low pass filter network. So, what do we know about our friend the Arduino? Well, basically, we know it can't really output a sine wave it can only output a square wave so I have pin 5 which is a PWM pin turned on it says analog right 
uh, 5, 127, which should give us about a 50% duty cycle. So if we hook this up here, and then hook it up here, and then we get our scope to read it, we should have a square wave. So let's bring that up and bring it in. So there's our square wave. Not very bright. Let's try to brighten this up a little bit. Is that better? Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, we've got uh, 976.835 hertz. So let's just call it close to a kilohertz. And that is the direct square wave output from our Arduino. But now, if we move it over past the first RC filter, roll down there so you can see where I've moved. We're coming in, this is our input here on the right, we're moving left. What you see here is, well, come on, focus. There we go. What you see here is the classic charge and discharge cycle of the capacitor and that is an exponential charge and an exponential discharge. So that is uh, stage one of our network. Now we move over here to the next side. Hello. Hello, McFly. We're not getting anything. What's going on? Hold on. I think I just straightened out now. I just had a resistor hooked up wrong. So let's start again. There is our initial input, the square wave. There it is, the capacitive charge and discharge, which is stage one. Next we come over here to stage two, which gives us more of a triangle wave. And then we come over here to stage three. Whoa. Hello. Get back over here. Come on. And what we end up with is a pretty nice approximation of a sine wave. Right, Come on. Why are you not triggering? Why are you no trigger? One moment. No worries whatsoever. So we end up with a pretty nice approximation of a sine wave. And you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, these are very small. We have a period of about one millisecond and a frequency of around 980 hertz. Now, so you may be asking yourself, well, Paul, what are the values? Yes, I added another layer. The values are 1K for the resistors and 0.1 microfarad for the capacitors. It's a simple RC network. Resistors are hooked up in series. Capacitors are in parallel to ground in each part of the network. So that's what you get there. So why does it work? Well, it works because our RC network here basically allows us to do a Fourier transform. Uh, a Fourier transform, if you're unfamiliar with it, represents the time domain information stored in a function. In this case, our sine wave is simply a function. It is a function of the square wave. Uh, a simple example would be, um, like I said, our sine wave sine, which would be 2 pi frequency C times T, which is a, a, sim a single frequency of FC in the frequency domain. And then when we make a Fourier transform, we end up with two frequencies, F sub C and negative F sub C, blah, blah, blah. 
basically what we've done is we've taken all of the harmonics off of the square wave and given ourselves the remaining frequency which is simply the sine wave. Now, this circuit here is extremely frequency dependent. This is only going to work on um, frequencies around a kilohertz. Since we have a four channel scope, we might as well take advantage of all the channels, right? There you go. All of our channels in our RC network. Ta da! <laughs> hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a big old thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. It was uh, through your generosity that we were able to purchase this nice uh, oscilloscope which we'll be using in some future videos. Well, we'll be using it in all the future videos because this is now the uh, nicest scope I own. Again, we have our initial square wave. Then we have the capacitive um, exponential charge discharge. This one here, here, let me move this over a little bit. Then we have our triangle wave. And finally, our sine wave. And that, my friends, is how you make a sine wave out of a square wave and, more importantly, have fun with your new oscilloscope. Feel free to comment, share, don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.